Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers coming to you from the beautiful Sinro Manor Villa and Spa that's quietly and neatly tucked away right here in Lowlands. Now this villa will be your location today as we catch up on the major events and stories happening in Tobago. Of course we've got lots to share with you so let's get started right away with this week's headlines. The Chief Secretary resumes visiting farms across Tobago after a short pause. The Tobago Emergency Management Agency, or TEMA, is engaged in cleaning across Tobago due to the effects of recent inclement weather. The contestants of the 2021 Miss Tobago Heritage Personality Contest tell us why they decided to join the competition. And as International Suicide Prevention Day approaches, much light is being shed on the negative impacts of mental health that can lead to suicide. We have all these stories and more, of course, when we return. I am Anton Jordan, building superintendent of the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries, and the Environment. I took the vaccine because I have three children. I don't want to be wondering what happens to them in the event that I have to be hospitalized from the coronavirus. Right now, we are heading back out to work. More likely than not, we may encounter someone on the job either has the virus or has been exposed to someone with the virus. Please, we all have to do our part. Vax up. Protection starts with us. Farmers will soon have access to more state lands in several communities across Tobago in an effort to boost agricultural production with a focus on sustainability and food security. Recently, the Chief Secretary was accompanied by a core section of officials as he toured the lands. In this story, you'll find out the mid to long term goals for the sector. Here's more. Of course, um, as a policy decision at this point, we are placing uh, serious emphasis on food production. Um, and it's not that we weren't placing emphasis on it before, but of course with the advent of COVID-19 and the greater need for us to really focus on diversifying the national economy and ensuring that Tobago is in a position to contribute more than we have been doing to, of course, the national context and our very own context here in Tobago. I took the opportunity to lead a team of persons uh, from various agencies, of course, WASA, uh, the Land Management Department in the Tobago House of Assembly, um, Division of Agriculture, of course, um, specifically from our project implementation unit, and of course, the technical officer for agriculture was here as well. quite interesting because we are attempting to transform the agriculture landscape on the island so we are looking to invest in climate smart agriculture. Based on the sites that we would have visited, um, we would have realized that there is a lot of potential for increasing agriculture on the island. Um, it's quite interesting to see what the transformation would look like, uh, you know, with the land distribution that is actually going to be taking place. And it also provides the opportunity for us to encourage and promote young people um, to get interested in agriculture on the island. already into table X production 
you have already have people who have already been into sheep and, and, and goat production. Some people want to get into um, value-added products such as, as yogurt and milk and, and, and goat cheese and those kind of things. So it's been able to, in the medium term, see some sort of um, greater output coming um, from the investment that we are going to make in terms of lands being available and the resources that we going to put into developing them. There are some estates, for example, Richmond. The availability there is, is not very... It wasn't very easy for me to, or for us, I should say, to decipher that. Um, but based on the surveys and that kind of stuff, you will be able to determine the exact amount of land that is available in a place like Richmond Estate, for example. Uh, it seems to be very close to 200 acres. As I said, friendship is about 120 acres, but when we take into consideration those communal areas where we hope to put some solar panels and those kind of stuff, the actual availability may come down to 100 acres or so. The country recently experienced adverse weather conditions which caused flooding and property damage among other challenges. In Tobago, it spurred the Tobago Emergency Management Agency into action to provide support to residents in several communities. We hear more from Ryan McCool. Disaster preparedness is just one of the functions of TEMA. The agency also provides disaster relief. On September 2nd, the nation was hit by a severe weather event associated with a passing tropical wave some 50 to 100 kilometers east of Tobago. Moving at around 15 miles per hour, was a matter of hours, it was impacting us by midnight, by around 11 o'clock, Charlottesville was impacted, and by midnight, um, Trinidad started, had the effects of it. They lost over 500 homes as a result of that. Tobago reported 91 incidents as a result of the weather system including the displacement of a family of 12. Reports received included fallen trees, broken utility poles and lines, blocked roads and damaged roofs. These reports are categorized in three levels. Um, low risk, medium, high risk, and most high risk you will find in there the urgency of the response. TEMA also conducts preliminary damage assessments of properties to validate claims and ensure persons don't defraud the system. That they use these events to sometimes speak to abandoned buildings, uh, which they blame on the storm, have nothing to do with the storm. So reconnaissance become a very important thing to have a first-hand look to see exactly what is happening. And this is conducted by our CERT technicians who go out there 24-7 and they are able to do this quickly. A further damage assessment needs analysis is conducted by engineers of the Division of Settlements, Urban Renewal and Public Utilities. They get support from the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment. This ensures repairs can withstand further weather events. You want to make sure that if you're replacing galvanized, that the lads that you're putting the galvanized on are proper. You want to make sure if the roof went off, that the, the plate that it is going on, or the substructure, it can take the renovation or the repairs. Funding remains a challenge for disaster relief efforts. But institutions like the National Commission for Self-Help and the THA's Department of Social Services can intervene once reports are timely. It's important, ladies and gentlemen, to understand that within 72 hours of your impact, you need to make a report to TEMA. Unless you have been incarcerated, hospital, out of the country or out of the island for some reason or the other, TEMA leads the island's disaster response together with interagency support from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service, the Army Reserves, the National Commission for Self-Help, the Department of Social Services, the Division of Settlements, and the DIQE. The TEMA director is reminding the public to contact the 211 hotline in case of emergency. I'm Ryan McCool. For Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago Heritage Festival is not simply about passing on our cultural traditions. It's also about providing knowledge as the island seeks to preserve its culture for generations to come. We'll tell you more about the latest Tobago Heritage Festival webinar dubbed Village Talk. 
The Mariah Old Time Wedding is a colorful and energetic reenactment of one aspect of Tobago's storied heritage. But have you ever wondered how it got started? Well, this was revealed along with some other valuable historical information during the Tobago Festival Commission Limited's webinar series for the Tobago Heritage Festival. The installment was entitled Village Talk. The first time the village of Mariah did the old time wedding reenactment was in 1962 when Trinidad and Tobago became an independent nation and the then Prime Minister Dr. Eric Williams asked for the village to do something, to portray something in Tobago. So they decided that a traditional wedding was the best thing they could do. The real dance is another popular Tobago tradition, and one Golden Lane resident shares the significance behind the dance. You just give real dance for all different, different occasions, like somebody getting married, or somebody sick, or some family member. You know, maybe they excel in something, whether it's exam or whatever. Or a baby born, a new baby born in the family. So you know, you get a little Thanksgiving, you celebrate with a little Thanksgiving. And all of this come, you, you, you get it revealed from a real dance. Whether what happened was good, you know, and you get the family, the whole family, and the ancestors. No, you can't do nothing with real dance unless you call your ancestors. Now we move to Pembroke to find out about August Day. Cultural icon Wendell Berkeley gives us the scoop behind this August 1st celebration. August Day celebration was done, was held on the 1st of August. It is really emancipation celebration, but they call it August Day. And, and so on the 1st of August, we had a, a favorite rum shop in Pembroke, the Derrick's Rum Shop. And it, there was a, 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 a chene tree, and under that was a, we could call it a yard. And so all the, the, the drummers and all the families from the drum yards will come there on the 1st of August. You will have stick fight, you will have speech ban, you will have masquerade, you will have nation drumming. You will have, so it's a celebration of and it was really emancipation celebration, but they call it August Day. The webinar is available on the Tobago Festival's YouTube channel, where you can enjoy a lot more of this valuable historical content. We're going to take a break, but when we return, we'll take a look at the third installment of the Vaccination My Choice, Your Safety series. Stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. The number of people in Tobago who are vaccinated against the COVID-19 disease is growing. As we continue this vaccination, my choice, your safety series, we're speaking with a few of them. Today, we hear from a sports officer, a steel pan entertainer, and the primary care nurse manager at the Tobago Regional Health Authority. Here's what they had to say about getting immunized. around me, um, I mean, day-to-day -day faces um, dying and, and they died from not knowing they had, um, what's, the word, what's the word, comorbidities, right, and, you know, it, had they taken the vaccine, maybe it, it may have helped them fight off the virus in that sense. I've seen the devastating, um, the devastation from the Delta variant. So, I, I mean, I told myself as healthy I, as I am, I, I told my wife, I think it's time for us to, to do it because we have children and we have family that we normally, you know, 
visit now and then, uh, I think to protect ourselves and, and protect our loved ones, it's time to go and take the vaccine. The side of farmers, they were not available to pass at that time, they took it. The technology for vaccines have been around over 60 years and more. And not only that, in particularly this vaccine, the Sinopharm, is made similar to all our other vaccines. I took the Sinopharm vaccine and there are a few reasons why I got vaccinated. Firstly, to make myself less likely to get the COVID-19 virus. I also wanted to protect myself as well as my family, friends and associates. I didn't want to get sick or get anyone else sick. So I think that to get vaccinated is the best way. I chose to get vaccinated because a lot of people was dying. Also, um, I want to know that, God forbid, I do get the virus, that I have the best fighting chance against it. I feel comfortable to leave my home, knowing that my fighting chances are higher. The data is telling us, persons who are fully vaccinated, you may test positive, but we are not ending up in hospital and we are definitely not ending up in ICU. I feel good that I have actually contributed to, to herd immunity and, and contributed to the cause um, by the government trying their very best to, to return to some form of normalcy. So I, I feel good that as a law-abiding citizen that I have actually contributed to that, to that effort. Being vaccinated as well, I said that we can return to some form of normalcy, persons who are home, still looking to get back out to work. I love my sports and we haven't been able to play for uh, close to two years. So I really want to get back to that. I want to say to members of the public, we are the nurses that have been working in this TRH for close to 30 years. You met us in hospital. You met us in maternity. We delivered your babies. We were the ones who, when you came to the health centre for vaccines for your children, we vaccinated your children. And we are saying now to you that this vaccine is safe and we would not tell you take a vaccine that is not safe. I played a plan, still plan, and in order for us to have events and functions and so on, it will have to have gathering. And in order for us to have gathering, we have to get vaccinated. Get vaccinated now. It is safe, it is effective, and it is life-saving. And in order for us to go back to our normal lives, go get vaccinated. Don't hesitate, just go and vaccinate. The island is getting set to find out who will be the 2021 Miss Tobago Heritage Personality. So today we introduce you to the contestants and hear a little about their inspiration for entering the show. Of course, this year the competition has gone virtual. Here are the details in this story. Have a look. The 2021 edition of the Miss Tobago Heritage Personality Show takes place this weekend virtually. Eight contestants from around Tobago are vying for the prestigious title. But who are this year's young hopefuls? Well, it's time to get to know them. I love the fact that shows like this enable persons to leave with confidence, empathy, ambition, and a general holistic development. For me, I think it's a unique opportunity for young girls to display their confidence and to boost character and get to know each other better. You know, sometimes people look at beauty pageants as something that is superficial. But for now, I would just say that beauty pageants are something that I would encourage most young persons to get involved in. It gives me the opportunity to meet new people and participate in the different cultural aspects. Getting to be yourself, getting to be you, it showcases to you. And what really inspires them? Let's hear. It's the ability to keep on pushing on. To find the determination within myself, even though things might be hard, it's just to keep going on without worrying what others think of me. What motivates me the most would be my failures in the past. And every morning I wake up and I remember my past failures and I don't want to be that personal, be in that space of failure again, and that motivates me every day. I would say that my greatest inspiration is my mother. I aspire to one day be as great as a woman as she is. 
They also explained what their favorite cultural tradition is. One of my favorite cultural traditions is the belle dance. The reason being, I had the opportunity at primary school to meet and greet the late Mr. Henry James, where he would have taught us the Congo belle. He would have said at that time that the Congo belle was rooted from a woman within the village of Patience formerly known as Beauty Douglas. And there's certain steps towards the Congo Belle. It has a front step and then a back step. Our wake here in Tobago, you know, I love the singing and dancing and energy that is emitted at that event. Um, I have never experienced a traditional one and I would like to. The Miss Tobago Heritage Personality Show is Saturday, September 11th on the Facebook pages of Tobago Festivals and Tobago Channel 5 at 8 p.m. It will then air on TTT on Sunday, September 12th at 7 p.m. So you've finished secondary school. Your next question might be, what's next? Well, for many young Tobagonians, the World of Work program introduces them to the work environment and teaches them many practical skills to support their future careers. Once again, this year's participants say they've benefited a lot from the program. Crystal George tells us more. For more than a decade, Tobago students have been getting support to prepare them for life after secondary school. The World of Work program that ran for a period of seven days in the month of August is an initiative of the Division of Sports and Youth Affairs. It helps youth ages 16 to 18 to gain the basic tools they'll need to enter the job market. So the World of Work program for us is one of our very outstanding programs because it creates an opportunity for our young persons where we saw a gap um, and that would have been prior to 2009 when we introduced the program. The program really seeks to expose young persons to training in areas related to the world of work. But over the years, we have added or extended the training areas so that there is also general benefit and understanding to build the capacity and skill set of young persons. Beyond life skills, and areas such as resume writing, interviewing skills, conflict resolution, and conflict management, participants learn to navigate a professional work environment. And this year's program introduced a new element. Attendees got to know more about this island we call home. We have a session that referred to as Time to Explore, and it's learning about Tobago because we found that after the first few years that some of the participants, they were not as familiar. And we thought to ourselves, again, by way of evaluation and assessing the program, we realized that that was one of the areas that we could definitely add and build on. The participants have also enjoyed the sessions, which they believe will benefit them in the future. The World of Work program this year was a very re revelational experience. It taught me as a young person and a participant uh, what to expect in the world of work today. I think this was a very great experience. At first, I thought it would be boring, but after a while, like the second day, I started to warm up to it better and it would start to actually get good. I didn't really want it to end in a way because I liked learning about how to budget and how to finance and how to deal with networking and how to be a good business operator. After these sessions, Students are placed into private and public sector organizations. This arrangement allows them to apply their skills directly in the world of work. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time for a break, but when we return, we'll hear how hope is being created through action as International Suicide Prevention Day approaches. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi team, I'm Nadia. I'm a wife, a mother of two, and your transportation planner. I got vaccinated to help protect my family, my children, and to give myself a fighting chance against the war of COVID. My job takes me places. Every day I interact with over 100 workers in traffic management, the police, community stakeholders, and business persons. It's been too long. It's time to show COVID who's the boss. So, vax up, because protection starts with us.
September 10th was World Suicide Prevention Day. Raising this awareness is even more important given the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on mental health. It also makes this year's theme of creating hope through action both well-considered and timely as it reflects an effort to support those who desperately need help. We have more in this story. Globally, one in every 100 deaths results from suicide according to the International Association for Suicide Prevention. To prevent suicides, it's important to understand why people choose to take their own lives. Therapeutic counselor at the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, Dian Mundy, explains that thoughts of suicide usually start with a major depressive disorder. Those affected feel unable to cope with chronic stress. Those signs or symptoms are usually um, feelings of hopelessness, feelings of worthlessness. It is also marked by significant changes in mood. So persons may develop certain types of mood swings. You may realize their mood has changed drastically. Persons may begin isolating themselves. There is also a change in appetite. The person may be eating less or maybe eating more. And also a change um, in sleeping patterns. The person may be suffering from insomnia. Not everyone with suicidal thoughts attempt suicide. In many cases, the state of depression is heightened, and this often leads to tragedy. Persons may be speaking more about um, what life would be like without them being around. So if you realize someone suffering from depression and you realize they're taking it up a notch, so they're talking about death, they're writing um, goodbye letters or notes, they're giving away their possessions, or they're making comments such as, um, the world will be better, I will be better off dead, or the world will be better without me in it. These are heightened signs to look for. Still, there is hope of reducing the number of people committing suicide. We can all play our parts by raising awareness, reducing the stigma around suicide, and encouraging well-informed action. Psychological intervention is also available via the emergency hotlines of the Health Division and the Trinidad and Tobago Association of Psychologists. And if you know someone who's attempted suicide, you should contact the police or an ambulance to intervene. Never tell any, anyone who is suicidal or who may be attempting suicide to get over it or um, do what you want. Or we make statements like these and it's really, really um, not becoming of us as human beings trying to become supportive and creating hope. We want to create hope through action. So you have to take the right steps and the right action in order to deter someone from committing suicide. By staying informed about the signs of potential suicide and taking the right action when it's needed, you can help save your life. I'm Ryan McCool for Let's Talk Tobago. We've come to the end of yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. You can email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and fantastic week. We leave you with an eye-catching montage of the Sinro Manor Villa and Spa. Do enjoy.